Internet. And today we're going to be talking about cupping, uh, an issue or a thing that uh, is actually quite popular now and is spreading across the world, but maybe some people uh, have li little information about. Uh, here to talk to us about that is Dr. Munir Ravalia, chair, uh, chairperson of the International Cupping Society. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And of course, joining us is our in studio audience. Assalamu alaikum. And uh, for this part of the show, uh, we're going to turn the uh, show to the doctor and he will explain briefly about cupping. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, cupping in Arabic is known as hijama. Um, maybe if we def define cupping, uh, if we change that name to wet cupping. And the difference between wet cupping and traditional dry cupping is the act actual extraction or removal of blood from the body. Okay. Um, the reason why we would want to do this, because there are certain stagnation areas within the body that the blood collects in, and it's been sort of shown through medical studies that removal of this blood is very beneficial to all the, the whole body system. And if I explain it very simply for the audience, it, uh, like we take our car for the general service every year, and the mechanic, he will drain the old oil and replenish it with a fresh oil. So this, this new oil it replenishes the engine, makes the car work better, more efficiently. The same way for the body. By removing this old, so-called bad blood, the body has to reproduce fresh blood, and this replenishes the organs. And 70% of the disease comes from within the blood. So if you're actually removing the old and replenishing with the new, it's a very good way of the body keeping itself in check detoxifying itself um, and also for specific medical ailments it's uh, it can be <coughs> it is utilized for this for example people who suffer from chronic conditions um, it's very very beneficial over and above maybe the medications that we are used to taking throughout the world not only in the west in the east we become very uh, addicted to somewhat to medications to medication yeah. so yeah. Wet cupping, specifically removing the wet, re refers to blood? Exactly. Okay, so uh, what is involved? What kind of instruments do you use for cupping? Okay, obviously we wish to promote this as a very safe uh, practice. Not maybe some people may have seen, uh, seen videos on YouTube with blood squirting out everywhere yeah. and dirty cups. What we use is very, st we use sterile equipment uh, and all our equipment should be disposable. To safeguard the patient, this is the utmost. And especially in Islamic medicine, there's no point a physician or a doctor trying to do some medical treatment but harming the patient at the same time. But also by using uh, sterile equipment and disposable equipment, it also safeguards the practitioner. So the yes. doctor needs to safeguard his self first and foremost. His practice from exactly. lawsuits and other things. These things will come in, yes. Okay, so how is i mean can you explain just the process of how it works specifically bad blood like uh i mean is there any sort of research on this uh topic of bad blood for example yeah i mean there are more and more studies coming about and inshallah i think later on uh dr dr tamir who is a specialist in the hijama he will be going to very specific clinical details um he has done a thesis uh, in respiratory medicine for children on how the cupping actually medically produces benefits for the patient. Okay, so are there any like complications from cupping? Is there any problems that can be raised from cupping? Sure, I mean if you look at the procedure there would be maybe something that you might term as a short term, not necessarily a complication, but sometimes for example certain places of the body for treatment. For example on the face is very good for ocular problems, eye problems, on the head but this will leave us a uh, period of bruising for a certain period of time. Okay. So obviously the patient needs to be aware of this because they may be going to work the next day and people, you know, may not appreciate what this is. Yeah, so how long does this, like, uh, bruising or... Because I've seen some pictures online while I search cupping. Yeah. There does seem to be some sort of, like, round circle Round circle, bruise. exactly. What is that? I mean, this, 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 this is when you are drawing the blood to the surface of the skin. You get a local congestion. Um, different between different skin types also the color of the person's skin okay. will affect the type of bruising but as i say this is not really complication it's just a period of time that the patient will experience this but eventually this will go away fade away and it's yeah temporary yeah okay so uh like you mentioned earlier fire cupping 
Uh, the Chinese also use different kinds of herbs, uh, and there's dry cupping. What are the what are the different kinds of these? And I guess the Islamic version uh, hijab is only wet cupping. Yeah, that's correct. I mean, traditionally the Chinese would use uh, the method of creating the vacuum, because the vac the actual cup is placed on the specific point of the body that you're treating. And the fire was traditionally used to create the suction, to create the vacuum. So that's what would be known as the fire cupping. But it, these days, it's very simple. We have a hand pump that creates that vacuum. So maybe some of the dangers that may arise with the fire cupping is removed. Is removed. There is some benefit, though, in using the fire cupping. Okay. It's because the heat causes something called vasodilation. It actually draws more blood to the area. So there is benefits with different techniques. And as you mentioned, that the Prophet ﷺ, he utilized the wet cupping, and in the hadith uh, that talks about this is in Sahih Bukhari. He talks about benefit from three things, from the gulp of the honey, from the incision of the kappa, and from cauterization. But he also mentions at the end of the hadith that it's forbidden. It, uh, the akhir dawa the last of the medicine, is from the cauterization. And that is uh, a technique of sort of u using heat and burning, burning the area. But some would say, okay, well, <coughs> the Prophet lived... Uh, a few I mean, thousand years ago, roughly, uh, that was sort of like antiquated uh, medicine. Uh, what do you? What is your view on people who say that? Sure, as we know, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, wa lil alamin, he was sent unto as a mercy unto mankind. So this was from the the time that he was, up till the end of the uh, end end of the world. So people who say that I can maybe understand. They, they're thinking maybe in the old days they use these old techniques and there's no evidence for it. But this is something that we're actively doing within our society is to uh, have a program whereby specific medical studies are conducted to show the benefit from this. And as I say, the, uh, the reason why hijama works so well is because it's a technique and a method that allows the body to heal itself rather than using other things like drugs, which as we know have side effects. For example, even a paracetamol. Something very simple, something that we may even say, okay, it's very cheap to use. Yes. You know, you can just take a quick paracetamol, might get rid of your headache. But these things, have, they do have side effects. And even if something like a paracetamol, it takes one week for it to be cleaned from the, from the whole body system. Okay. So these, these are some of the uh, specific reasons why we are promoting and uh, trying to revive this sunnah. But, any, but I mean, is any, you <coughs> said, but also hijama has... Uh, you get temporary bruising, for example. Sure. So are, are you saying the damage to these painkillers, is it just temporary or is it long-lasting? Long-lasting. Long and lasting. if you actually look at the, the pharmaceutical companies, they even create diseases so there is a drug for it. <laughs> because they, they spend billions on drugs. So if they've spent 20 X billion on a drug, but there is no uh, disease to, for it to cure, to they create these things, okay. which is uh, unbeneficial to the whole of the society. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, that's all the time we have for this segment. We're going to go to a short break and we'll be back with more. Thank you and stay tuned. Closing the Gap Why Closing the Gap? In this program, Sheikh Yusuf Estes and Omar Dunlap are going to discuss how to bridge the gap between peoples of different cultures and orientations. The gap between males and females, Muslims and non-Muslims, the East. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, we're sitting here talking with Dr. Munir Orvalia about cupping. Uh, and we're going to now go to our audience to see if they have any questions. Assalamu alaikum. Well, I have a question. Uh, my mother, she has a CKD, chronic kidney disease, also has a, a high blood pressure. She's not allowed to use any salt. And because of this disease, she gets uh, uh, swollen uh, legs and arms. So she bought this, uh, this cupping set, but she's, she's not sure if she should, if she should use it. She, she's scared of it, basically. So is it good for her to use it? Would you recommend it? What I would say, first of all, she needs to have an assessment by ideally a doctor, but also someone who's trained in in the, s in the wet cupping and hijama. Um, there's no reason for her to be scared of the treatment. It's fairly easy. There are light scratches to the body and everyone would react differently to that. Quite, you know, we can expect that. Um, but for something like her, she has a chronic condition. So it's not that just necessarily you do the hijama once and she'll be cured. It may be a serious 
uh, or after she has an assessment, the doctor will draw a treatment plan and then decide for her, okay, she needs regular treatment after a certain number of weeks for a period of time. Uh, but for the, for example, you for, mentioned for the blood pressure, if I give a very simple example, if you have a can of Coke, when you release that pressure, it reduces the pressure. So the same way for the body, when you remove the blood, you remove the volume of that blood, if you think of the body as the can, you're actually reducing the pressure. So that physiologically is actually reducing her blood pressure. So hence she could possibly end up reducing her medication that way. Well, so she doesn't she doesn't urinate enough. Yeah. So would this help, like uh, uh, coping? Would that help her? Uh, yeah. Her urination? As, uh, as if we can mention the, again the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, he said within the honey, the cupping, and the cauterization is a cure. So this is from Sahih hadith in Sahih Bukhari. So we understand there is a cure from this, but the timing we don't know. This is only from Allah subhanahu wa taala. So some people may have treatment after one time and they get benefit. Some people may be treated for 10 years maybe with this, but if they keep their, their yaqeen and understanding that this is from the sunnah and recommended, then obviously the cure is from only from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not from us anything that we do. So inshallah we pray that she gets shifa from this. Thank you very much. Shouldn't the, this, uh, these treatments, shouldn't they be used also, uh, shouldn't they seek medical help from out like conventional medicine? Uh, and then if uh, they want uh, additional treatment, they should go to something like uh, that's more natural, for example. Uh, but shouldn't they go, like if you have a high blood pressure problem, shouldn't you go to a doctor first yeah. uh, who specializes in conventional medicine? Yeah, I mean, I think ideally someone who's trained in what we call conventional medicine yes. and someone who knows about this traditional medicine or a complementary therapy would be that would be the most ideal person to visit okay. because it's not to say that within the modern science or modern med uh, treatments is to push that all aside we're not saying yeah. that at all it's to complement and utilize and gain the best from both sides okay do we have any other questions from the audience Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. my question about uh, copying is um, say for example a patient complains about pain in like a leg area like does the um, does that mean there's bad blood in that area and the cupping takes place in that area or could say the blood moved throughout the bloodstream and it's uh, hard to find the area of a uh, yeah. problem? Usually pain, I mean dependent on what the cause of the pain was. So for example, if they've had an injury or something like that, it's very site specific. So pain is treated specifically at the site of uh, the, the pain they are feeling. But you're quite correct in, uh, for example, someone may have something called referred pain. So maybe if, I'll, if I give you a very simple example, someone might have pain in the tooth up here, but the actual problem is down here because all the nerves are interconnected, so it's something called referred pain. Hence, once they have an assessment by their doctor or the hijama therapist, uh, they can see, okay, what the cause of this problem is, because someone may have arthritis. So this would again would be the pain would be from something, a chronic inflammatory disease, and they would need specific treatment within those specific areas. Uh, is cupping considered, is it Islamic necessarily to uh, practice cupping? I would say if we look uh, purely uh, from the hadith again, that it's not only something to be used specifically if some, some people quite rightly maybe th they don't have the full knowledge, is that they think okay you have to be on your deathbed or have something very serious to have the cupping done. Yeah. But we know that the Prophet peace be upon him, he recommended even before the summer months that someone should have cupping. So it's a, it's a form of detoxification because especially in the lives we lead today all the car pollution, the food we eat, the pesticides all these things are contained, can get contained within the blood and as we mentioned before 70% of a disease comes yes, from the blood. the blood. So by removing that your body refreshes and replenishes itself. So it's like uh, cupping can use, be used for spiritual ailments for example, is that possible? Yeah, I mean, there are many times that we use the, uh, the hijama or the wet cupping for those people who have been afflicted, maybe with jinn, people who have psychological problems, depression, uh, bipolar disease, schizophrenia, schizophrenia. The hijama is very, very good in these cases, as you know, with a combination of ruqya as well that an individual can do, the utilization of the Quran. But again, it depends from the initial assessment because there, are, there may be those people who have psychological problems that may need 
some form of medical treatment. So it's not to dismiss those, but it's it's very important that can use the in, yeah the inv individual who is assessing it is able to differentiate and put the patient into the right category, so they be get the best treatment. So uh, do you consider like uh, cupping like a cure all? Because uh, I mean. All the diseases they said, yes, cupping can cure those. Is there any diseases you can't cure with cupping or, and not necessarily diseases, but ailments? Yeah, I mean, obviously something, for example, like a cancer, yeah. if it has spread, if there's malig malignancy, so if someone's got a chest cancer and it's gone to other parts of the body, it's quite a widespread. So it may not necessarily cure, but again, as we say, the cure is only from Allah. We cannot make that judgment. But it may be a way of uh, assisting the patient to have more, the quality of life will be improved and reduce the symptoms they are facing. Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, my question is like, um, where did cupping like originate from? Like, who invented it? Um, right. There is a lot of history um, regarding cupping and it's been practiced for thousands of years. Even the Egyptians, ancient Egyptians, on some of their scriptures, they have, uh, you can see the cupping instruments. And yeah. there's something called the Ebers papyrus. We know the papyrus from Egypt. And it was utilized from them. The Chinese have also been using this. The Greeks have been using it. So there's a long history. It's not that something has just suddenly sort of sprung about. There's a very long history of this that has been used for ancient times and benefit people. And we see now, alhamdulillah, the sunnah is being revived again today. So the major point here is that it's uh, not invasive, it doesn't affect you, it's uh, outside of the body and it uh, heals quickly. Uh, so what do you say, some people say like cupping must be uh, practiced in certain uh, days like the full moon or some certain days. Uh, what do you, do you have any uh, research about that? According again, if we look initially probably from an Islamic point of view, the Prophet Sallallahu he mentioned that the cupping should be done on the 17th, 19th, and 21st of the lun lunar month, oh. so the Islamic calendar. And from that, there's a cure. But also, it's not to say that necessarily hijama or wet cupping is forbidden on any day. It can actually be conducted on any day of the week and at any time. But again, there are specific times, as we mentioned, in the month for it to be done, and specific times in the day. Early morning, before one has had, his, uh, had their breakfast, this is actually the optimum ideal time to conduct the hijama treatment. So when I was thinking about a full moon, for example, like uh, like in the news you hear, oh, could the crime rate uh, during a full moon goes up? Yeah. What, like, uh, what is maybe the reason why, because of the tension from the moon, the full moon, or is there any uh, kind of research into that? There is some uh, studies conducted into that, and it, it, they, these talk about the way the, the full moon, the moon, it pulls the tide of the sea and yeah. at this time it's when they call the, 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 the blood is raging, the blood is boiling. Yeah. yeah. So this specific period, of, that's why hence where you maybe say people are out committing crimes and things yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of uh, tension, you yeah, feel so tense it, yourself. Yeah, so on those specific times when the blood is very hot, uh, extraction of that blood at that time, it calms the body down, refreshes your blood and you feel very energized after that treatment as well. So is it like uh, instead of like massages, are you like uh, for tension, just like you feel personal tension, uh, hijama can use, be used for that, uh, or uh, just like uh, in everyday personal life, yeah. uh, is it useful for that? It's very, 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 very useful for that. And we have many patients coming to us, and alhamdulillah, not only Muslim patients, even in the West we are seeing non-Muslim patients coming forward to this treatment because they have learnt about the benefits of this, and again, they are tired of going to their doctor they have a pain, they have an ache, they have an ailment, and all the doctor does is prescribe them drugs. Yeah, yeah. They're on a plethora, many medications that are giving them side effects. So they're looking for those treatments, not only hijab, maybe herbal, herbal medication as well, but something where their body can refresh and replenish and heal itself. So how many people around the world are using uh, cupping, uh, like right now in the modern yeah. age? I mean, I would say from my experience, alhamdulillah, I've been able to practice hijama for the last uh, six years. And within the last two years, I've seen a great increase in this. Uh, I think it's practiced a lot in the East and the West, but because of there's no real government regulations, yeah. a lot of treatments are done sort of what they call hidden treatments. So not in the limelight, someone might not have a big clinic to practice it in, but people are benefiting from this. And obviously, if you personally benefit from it, then you will advise your friends, your family, your children to gain from this.
But I mean, you understand why that's a problem. Like, okay, it's not government regulated. Uh, you don't really hear about it much. Like, honestly, that's a uh, cupping. It's something I've heard about, like people do, but not necessarily in the modern age. Uh, so maybe it has, like, uh, it needs more regulation, more uh, oversight, uh, research. Yeah, no, I totally agree. I mean, especially to convince people's minds, yeah. especially the doc doctors who are practicing conventional medicine. For them to see un and understand the benefits, they would like to see specific clinical trials. Yeah. And one of the reasons we started uh, the International Cupping Society was to have some form of regulation of this. Just like when medicine or allied health professions like dentistry, nursing, when they started in their individual countries, they became self-regulatory. So they had a body that regulated to safeguard the patient yeah. and safeguard the clinician. In the same way, we would like to emulate that. And this is what we're trying to work towards, inshallah. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions from the audience? Um, does we have, um, do we have a specific age that we can't use cupping words? I mean, for babies, kids, children. Yeah. Can we use cupping? <coughs> yeah, I would say, obviously, someone, for someone to be treating very young children or very old people, they need to be quite experienced in the hijama. But it's not forbidden to do it on any of these age. And even in Turkey, I, have, uh, I know a doctor there that they utilize cupping, a very small cup, and a very small amount of blood is removed after the child has been born, if the mother has had a cesarean section. And again, it can be used for very old people, but with specific precautions. Do we have no more questions? Yeah, I have one more question. <coughs> um, cupping, are there any specific places on the body which is like not recommended to use cupping on? Because I've heard um, it's not good for cupping head cupping your head on your face and stuff? No, we actually see that cupping on the face, as we mentioned earlier, is very good for eye diseases, mm. people with chronic sinus problems, and utilization on the head, again, for those who suffer from depression, anxiety, it actually can be used for increasing a memory. So we see students of learning the, the, doing the heads of Quran. It's very good for this. Actually, treatment on the head is very, very beneficial as long as it's conducted by the in, an individual that is is skilled and proficient in this area. Okay, thank you very much. So uh, obviously cupping is used nowadays and it was used uh, in the old days. How has cupping changed? And is it even the same treatment? Because you said, of course, uh, the suction cup. That we would know there's no nothing like that in the Prophet's time. How sure. has the treatment changed since the Prophet's? I would say maybe advancement in the tech, in actual physical equipment and techniques. The physical. Equipment. Yeah. So for example, they may have used the fire, a bull horn. But now it's very easy for us to get one of these pumps. You can even get electric devices to assist. So I would say it was changed in that way. But the actual, the, the, the specific, the way the treatment is done, there is no difference in it. It's actually extraction of the blood. But the way the points, some people might say, well, how do you know which point is which? Yeah. This is something known as observational medicine. So for example, an indiv individual, a patient comes to him and he's treated him on certain sides of the body and uh, they've, uh, they've noticed that the patient has gained benefit from this. So over time they will treat the patient on these different areas because we may not find a hadith about every single disease in the world. This yeah. would be impossible. Yeah. So over time, those who have been practicing th this traditional art would have worked out a way like the Chinese. They, uh, call, they have body meridians. So these are channels running through the body. And we note that these are very similar to the site, specific sites uh, that cup we use in methods cupping. like uh, okay, when like I was looking uh, what are the dangers the like there were some burns is there any uh, dangers they had been burned uh, because people uh, had done cupping but I think the person wasn't an expert or something like that yeah I mean obviously for anyone to be practicing any med medicine on any patient they should be very proficient in this burns can occur uh, for example if the cup is left on too long and it's too strong a vacuum this can cause a, a temporary burn to, this, to the area, and that would take an increased time period of time of healing, okay. and may even leave some s slight scarring in the area. So again, an advice to anyone going for this treatment is to go to an individual that is very proficient and experienced yes. in, in, the, in the hijama. Yeah. Okay, inshallah, we're going to go for a break, and we'll be right back. Don't uh, go away. Back to the Prophet.
Join Sheikh Amr in the program Back to the Prophet, wherein he teaches us practical lessons from the Prophet's life and how this can help us to overcome our challenges in the present. We talk about the life example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, seeking guidance for ourselves. In the early days after the revelation of the Holy Quran, the Muslims were greatly persecuted, so much so that quite a few Muslims had to leave Arabia and migrate to Africa to live among Ahl Kitab, Christian people who followed the Gospel of Christ. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, joining us in the studio to talk about cupping is uh, Dr. Tamir Shaban. Uh, he is a medical doctor and a researcher at the University of Cairo. And he's also the vice chair of the International Cupping Society. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alaykum salam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And uh, the first question I want to ask you is what is the history behind cupping? Uh, cupping therapy is a bit deep back. Uh, from uh, thousands of years. Uh, the first do cupping is the ancient Egyptians. The first uh, book re uh, written in, uh, in medicine, Ebers Babers, is the first uh, book who, uh, who mentioned cupping. Uh, cupping, uh, uh, there is a, we, we have a slide there, uh, uh, there is a tomb. Uh, with uh, a cupping glasses in uh, this uh, in, uh, in, uh, in front of this door. Uh, then uh, ancient Egyptians bus uh, this uh, modality to Greeks. Uh, Chinese uh, take this uh, modality and uh, they practice this. Then go get uh, all over the world. Um, there is uh, then uh, when Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam come and uh, uh, do cupping therapy and. Uh, uh, tell us to do covering syrup, this revives this uh, ancient uh, method of healing. Okay, uh, how is, well, what is the evidence behind cupping exactly? Yes, uh, cupping, there is uh, a new science, is evidence-based medicine. Uh, this evidence-based medicine, we uh, make trial about something we can't see. Yes. Uh, we can't know uh, its mechanism uh, and see the results. When we see good results, this is evidence for this modality. Uh, cupping, there is many, many researches about cupping therapy. Uh, in Egypt, as example, there is uh, a doctoral thesis about the effect of cupping therapy for uh, diabetes uh, and for uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and um, uh, they uh, get a very good results in this uh, trial. There is another uh, study about uh, cupping therapy for uh, lower back pain. This is ve uh, give very good results. And I understand you also have your own research yes. uh, paper about asthmatic children and the benefits of yes. cupping for them. Uh, this, uh, this study is uh, about the role of cupping therapy as a complementary medicine for uh, uh, on the pulmonary functions and the quality of life of asthmatic children. Uh, I do cupping therapy for 30 children uh, as a treatment group and there is uh, another 30 children as a control group uh, who uh, take only drugs. My uh, treatment group take uh, cupping therapy and drugs. And drugs. Okay. Uh, and uh, in the final uh, of, the, of the study, we find that uh, there is uh, uh, a significant results, positive results from uh, cupping on this on other group. Uh, uh, my group, uh, which I treated with cupping, uh, get uh, high quality of life. They uh, go to their uh, schools regularly. They uh, don't have any acute attacks during uh, the, this uh, study. They uh, get higher uh, pulmonary functions than other group. So that's exactly what the uh, difference is. So what, yeah, what were the specific differences uh, as a whole for the different groups? Like how did the how did the uh, 
the ones who use cupping, how do they benefit more from the... Uh, uh, in this study, I, um, I think about um, design a program for every family. The, uh, asthma is very, very, very bad disease. Yeah. And uh, when the, uh, uh, asthma is uh, in the child, uh, prevent him from uh, playing, from going to school. Uh, and I, uh, in my, uh, my intent, I intend to design a program which uh, we can uh, le uh, teach this method for uh, a father or a mother. Uh, this mo uh, method which I used uh, is a flesh cupping syrup. We can uh, the, uh, very quick uh, applying and the removing of cups in on certain points. Uh, when uh, father or mother can easily learn this procedure and do this for uh, her uh, or his children, this will be very beneficial for them. Uh, when I start the, this uh, study, I actually uh, afraid from uh, not participating from uh, mothers and fathers yeah, for this Maybe they be too scared or something. Yes, yes. Uh, after uh, one session, they ask for me to uh, to do the whole the whole course of cubbing, the, uh, the course is ten uh, sessions, two per weeks for five weeks. After the uh, from the first week, they uh, see the difference uh, on uh, on the child. Okay, uh, I also have a question uh, for you, Dr. Munir. Um, the mechanisms of cubbing. I know we also have a slide about this, uh, and you can both add things to it. The mechanisms of cupping. In terms of the the actual, uh, like you like, like you spoke it. about uh, flash cupping. Uh, what are the different mechanisms throughout yeah, history? Yeah. Also, uh, the the mechanisms of cupping syrup. There is different series about cupping syrup. Uh, there is ma many studies to uh, show uh, what actually the mechanism of cupping syrup. Uh, uh, one of them is the, the Bain Gate theory. There is. Um, a series that uh, said uh, there is uh, a pain channels in the body yeah. uh, trans uh, transmit uh, uh, signals for from uh, the painful area to the brain. Uh, cupping will prevent this signals from reaching the brain, then the the pain uh, uh, go away. Uh, the next is uh, prostaglandin theory. Prostaglandin theory is uh, prostaglandin is um, uh, are um, products of inflammation in the body. When we take these uh, products outside the body, the, the inflammation we, uh, will cure. Uh, other series, uh, is there is a more acceptable series, uh, uh, nitric oxide series. Nitric oxide is uh, a gas which yeah. uh, produced in the body by the, uh, by the wall of the uh, arteries and veins. Uh, this uh, nitric oxide ca uh, causes uh, vasodilatation of the, of the body, increases the circulation, uh, uh, prevent uh, thrombosis of, uh, of the blood. Uh, some uh, studies uh, show, th show that when we do cupping, this uh, gas releases in the body. Uh, another theory is uh, endorphin and encephalin uh, theory. Endorphin and encephalin is uh, are uh, physiological um, pleasure substances which are produced from our brains. This, uh, these substances, uh, there is a series that uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, the brain produces these substances after coming. And this will uh, so make it releases us so these certain chemicals. Uh, and this body. is uh, what uh, we feel after coming, the, we are uh, happy and we are Revived in good news. Uh, the, the Chinese medicine theory is the channels, uh, energy channels theory. Uh, there is uh, a 14 uh, channel in the body, all over the body. Uh, this channel uh, have each uh, point, points in, in, every, uh, in every channel. And uh, by stimulation, certain points, we, uh, we uh, produce some effects, such as acupuncture theory. The, there is a a very popular research uh, published in uh, the Journal of Biomechanics in uh, 2005 
by uh, the researcher uh, Sam. He uh, said that uh, cupping can stimulate acupuncture uh, points and any uh, acupuncture, uh, any uh, evidence that uh, proves that acupuncture can cure anything or can treat any disease, uh, this is applied to cupping. And uh, he, uh, uh, he replied to uh, some of uh, uh, in, in U of USA societies uh, such as Cancer Society say, said uh, that uh, cubbing have no evidence but acupuncture have evidence, okay. has evidence. Uh, he replied to this, uh, uh, the, to this uh, word by, by this research cubbing can stimulate can more than uh, acupuncture okay. in any disease. Okay, uh, there is a hadith, uh, Dr. Munir, that uh, says you can't uh, do cupping on certain days. Uh, do you know anything about this? Uh, what is your uh, opinion on that? Yeah, in uh, Ibn Qayyum al Jawzi, in Tib al Nabwi, the medicine of the Prophet, uh, he mentions in the Arabic uh, these various hadiths, many relating to the hijab and cupping, and he also gives a tafsir of these hadiths. Unfortunately, in the English translation, they've left out some very important points. So the one that mentions specifically about it is forbidden to do on this when uh, specifically mentions Wednesday and Friday. That these are actually weak hadith, and he even mentions that the one who had narrated the hadith, who a kadir, he was actually a liar of this in translation of hadith. So we need to be very careful of this because, uh, unfortunately, because of this miscommunication uh, from the translation. Yeah. Many people are staying away from hijama from, from Wednesday. But ex as we mentioned earlier on, that hijama ideally, to get the best benefit, can be done on the 17th, 19th, and 21st of the lunar month. Inevitably, there will be days where a Wednesday and Friday fall on these. So these are not contradicting each other. It's rather there's a wake hadith. And even Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He created uh, on Yom al Arba, on the Wednesday, He created light. So again, this is the reason we do this. And Imam Malik, He. Uh, also had hijama done on these specific days himself to show people that it's not forbidden to do hijama can be done on any day of the week. Because there's time. good in it, so why would it be uh, no, said sorry, that you can't do it on a certain day? Uh, what are the types of uh, cupping? There are different categories. I okay. Uh, many people know that uh, cupping have uh, only two types. Yeah. But actually uh, there is 11 types uh, of cupping therapy. Uh, the first is uh, uh, according to the pressure applied to the cups, uh, light cupping syrup, medium cu uh, cupping syrup, strong cupping syrup. There is a, a massage cupping therapy. There is um, also needle cupping therapy. Uh, they apply needle before uh, applying cups. Uh, there is uh, a herbal cupping therapy. Uh, uh, both uh, some types of, uh, of Chinese herbs before yes, applying okay. cups uh, because cups uh, increase the circulation in this area yeah. and this can uh, get more uh, so get the enhanced actions do the for herbs these herbs. The herbs circulate in the blood? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Okay, so can you just explain like uh, you said like specifically like the types of small like you said, what does that involve? The weaker uh, cupping. Um, weak cupping therapy is for uh, children yeah. and for old people. We can use uh, uh, cupping therapy and medium cupping therapy. There is a special cups for that uh, for uh, children. Okay. Uh, uh, rubber cups, uh, self squeezed cups, and uh, when we do cupping with these uh, cups, there is a medium or a weak, cubby, a weak uh, suction produced. Uh, strong cubbing is for uh, adult people for some uh, be, uh, some beans. Uh, massage cubbing therapy to treat large areas, uh, to treat uh, muscle uh, spasms. Uh, needle cubbing therapy used in some cases which we uh, when we need to stimulate certain points and st uh, stimulate the around the area. Uh, in some research, research we, we don't need to put needles in, we put the cups. Co because we uh, just by applying the cups, we stimulate these points Stimulate actually. Okay. And uh, the needle is a very small 
to uh, to apply but the cup is large then stimulate this point and the point around it so dr tamar um what for a person who has no ailment he just wants to try out cupping just because uh it's a tradition of the prophet uh what do you recommend for him to do what uh, kind yeah. of cupping Cupping uh, as uh, a treatment uh, can used as a treatment and can be used as a preventive from diseases. Uh, we can uh, do cupping for uh, preventive uh, medicine. Uh, I recommend uh, go to uh, go to um, uh, a good cupping therapist. Uh, recommend uh, choose the best days from sauna as we say uh, 17th and 19th. Uh, choose um, choose uh, the 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 right time to go is the, the early morning to early. go to have uh, a good cupping session for preventive. Was that because reason. before a meal or after a meal? Uh, we recommend uh, the who will be will go to cupping not to eat two hours before cupping session. Oh, okay. Yes. So what's the reason for that? Not to eat. Uh, because uh, some are afraid from this, we can vomit or can... Oh, okay. Yes. So is there any pain that involves cupping, like when it's... Uh, because you said you might vomit or anything. Is there any pain that you get from it? No, I mean, the incisions are very small. Yeah. And when you apply the cup to the area with a vacuum, it actually creates something of called a partial anesthesia. So it sort of oh, numbs okay. the area. Numbs the area. But obviously different areas of the body, some areas are more sensitive than the other. And the patient may feel these little scratches. So that is something to, again, the patient, for them to be aware of that. But in the light of things, if you think of the benefit that you're going to gain, they say sometimes in the West we say no pain, no gain. Yes, yes. So it's exactly. a very small amount, light scratches, like paper cuts, and then to gain the benefit from that. This is a small <coughs> surgery. Yeah. It's not surgery you must fast afford. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, that's uh, all the time we have for this segment. Uh, we'll be back after a short commercial break. Uh, I hope to see you guys back.